So, here we are at Earth, third planet from the Sun and the largest of the terrestrial planets. And of course, the thing that stands out about the Earth, it has, because of the tilt of its axis, of course, four seasons, starting with the frigid one of winter. And these are fixed. These seasons don't change. Winter, and then going to spring, where it's nice and green, and then going to summer, where it's hot and sunny, and fall, where you see the leaves changing colors, such as the red color. The two main areas of the Earth are gonna be the water, which is pretty fixed, and the land, I guess demonstrated by the yellow color. And you can't talk about the Earth or think about the Earth without its unique feature. It's the biomass, the fact that the Earth is teeming with life. The Earth formed about 4.6 billion years ago, and about four billion years ago, the first replicating, self-replicating, um, biomass started and then about 3.5 billion years ago the ancestors of all life started which means that literally life seized on the opportunity as soon as the earth cooled we don't see this anywhere else which is what makes it so fascinating and makes the cube challenging what's um, interesting about this is that you have two banded sides but unlike being opposite each other they're adjacent to each other now in my cube it's not the white side that's bandaged, which it is in most, it's the blue side and the, I think it's the, yeah, the orange size. So, abracadabra. And it's scrambled. So I'm going to start off with the red, which is just adjacent to one of the banded sides. And my goal is to get the plus here, to get a line across here and the plus down here. That's, that's my overall goal. So I'm gonna put things in the red side. Now it doesn't have to be the red side. It could be the other one adjacent to the other bandage side, which is the green. I'm just gonna do the red because I can use this here and I can use this down here. So in any way I can just put them in. Now I may have to use the bandage sides in order to rotate these around. Like this I need to put down here to the yellow, move it twice and then move it in. So I've got my first plus, no problems. And basically what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be trying to fill in this line over here and the plus over here. And then we have ways of dealing with these up top. So it's not as complicated as it sounds, but I'm gonna turn it over and just start putting these in using strategy. So. Here's a yellow that I want to put over here. So just like we did with all the other cubes, move this across, up, back, and down. So I've got it here. Might as well work on the white part, which is here. So again, move it up, down, and back. So I got the line over here. Uh, here's the blue side and put that in over here that in over here. So here's my line here. I'm gonna get it over here now, up and down, line here. And I've got my plus here, but I need to finish my green line here. So where is my other green? It's, it's actually right here. So I'm just gonna cycle this around. Move it up to here and down. And then move this around here. And same thing. All right, now I wanna make sure that I get my uh, blue side. Well, actually, I'm gonna get my, my yellow plus here. Then we're gonna deal with this in a second. So up, back, and down. So got the line, got the line, got the line, and I got the plus. The only thing that's left is the blue. Now, rather than try to do a whole bunch of convoluted ninja action algorithms to flip this over here, what my basic strategy is, is I'm gonna try to make it to where this just comes down to here but obviously that messed these guys up. So what I really want to do is I want to find a way to rotate these. And what I'm actually talking about is moving these edge pieces. Well, we already have an algorithm as to how we can do that. We've moved edge pieces around before. We've done that on uh, Rubik's Cubes. So that's going to be R, U, R, I, U, R, 2, U, R, I. All right, I'm just going to do it again. 
and bingo. Turns out that when you do that algorithm on a bandage side, it only rotates these guys, the outer edges. If you were to rotate it with a bandage side at the side, um, then it will rotate the, the inner edges. That's part of the strategy that we're going to use. Again, no new algorithms here. So, why did I do that? Well, I did that because now I want to put these guys in order. So, when counting up here, let's just move these into position and see what's already solved. We have to have a white, green, yellow, and blue on the top and the bottom. What we have is we have two blues and two whites on the bottom. Obviously, that's not what we want, which means we must have two greens and two yellows. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do some flipping around. And with these two blues, if I rotate this twice, if I do a rotation like this, then it puts it in the area that we're going to want it. So now we just have one blue here and one blue here, one yellow here, one yellow here. But you see we've messed these up by turning it. So what I'm going to do to turn it back is I'm going to turn from the non-bandaged side so it doesn't move this around. I'm not going to do it from this side. And I'm going to move my yellow, the only other yellow one, back in here. So I didn't mess this up. I put these two together and now I'm going to turn it back. When I do that, I'm ensuring that I only have one of the color in there. So turn it back. These are back where it was and now we just have one yellow and one yellow. But what about the two greens? Well, you get the picture, it's the same thing. Here I have two whites, so I'm going to put, there's a white here and a white here, so I'll put the right here, the banded side. So a white is over here, then I find the other color that I have two of, which is green, and put that over here. And then I just do the same thing. By rotating it twice like that, I'm now isolating one color. But I've got to get this back, so I'm going to line up the other green here. And once I do that, I can be sure that I'm keeping each side with one color, and I'm fixing this, and I did the non-banded side when I turned it, and then back. So now I have the strategy that I want. I've got my X here, I've got my X here, and all my lines, and these are all set up in the right numbers on each side. Now the, it's just a matter of putting them in the right place. So I've got the oranges lined up and you can see this isn't where it's supposed to be, this is, this isn't. So what I'm going to do is we'll start off with, I guess, the non-banded side here, is I just want to rotate these around uh, using exactly the same algorithm. When I, uh, when I apply the algorithm, it's going to rotate them around as long as I do it just to the side of the bandage side. You saw that when I was over here and I applied that same algorithm, it, um, it rotated this around and it rotated these, but these were fixed. So move this outside of the bandage side and by doing that algorithm, these are all gonna flip. The only one that's not gonna flip around is the one that you're holding as the F. So I'm gonna solve the bottom one first. And I'll put my white one here. I need to move the blue over here. So I'm going to put it to the side, to the left side of my bandaged area, and just do my algorithm. All right, so not yet. Do it again. Oop, and there it is. Uh, but these two aren't solved yet. These two are. So what you do in this case is you move it over one. You see the yellow is here. The one that comes right after the yellow is the green. So I'm going to do the algorithm until I get the green one in here. And there's the green. So just move it back and you can see these are all where they need to be. We then flip over to the other side, do exactly the same thing. Get a bandage side to the right here. Move the yellow one in here. This is already in place. These are not. So I'm going to move it over by one. Here's the white. Right next to the white is the green, to the left of that. So I'm going to do my algorithm until I get green in here. And there it is. Move it back. And we've got our crosses. So all of our inner crosses are now solved. And all we needed was one algorithm.